Ah, Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ, and today's video is a bit impromptu. I had intended to do this video on video file management, storage, and compression. It was just on my shoot schedule for a bit later when I could also show you how to set up a RAID 5 storage array on Windows 10. I don't yet have the drives I need to set up a RAID array. However, circumstances have dictated that I partake in some much needed file management now. So I guess I might as well take you guys along for the ride and show you how I manage all the many hours of footage I compile. So let's just start with my basic workflow when it comes to my camera footage. As I complete a shoot or fill an SD card, all the footage is copied from the SD card to an external eight terabyte hard drive. The clips are not deleted from the SD card until the next step, which is when the clips are renamed and organized for the project and copied to a project folder on my one terabyte project drive which in this case is a one terabyte Intel 6 series M.2 NVMe SSD. Project folder is set up very simply with main folders, including media, scripts, thumb, which is all the files for thumbnails and the final renders. The media folder contains subfolders that correspond to each bin created in Resolve. I use DaVinci Resolve for editing. All still images, clips, and audio files, as well as screen caps and any other media needed are added to those media subfolders. Now, all this footage adds up real quick. Consider this, I record in 4K at 100 megabits per second. This consumes about 45 gigabytes per hour of filming. I record on a minimum of two cameras, so now we're at 90 gigabytes per hour. Add another 10 or 20 gigabytes of B-roll or screen caps and the need to maintain redundancy, meaning all that footage is on at least two separate drives and that's just a whole lot of file space. So I have a serious need to reduce as much space as I can. That's where the next step in the process comes in. Compression of all my raw footage, both A-roll and B-roll. I do this with a simple open source utility called Handbrake. Now, I'll get into what Handbrake is and what it does as we use it, but first let's get it downloaded and installed. There's a link to the download site in the description below. As always, when downloading open source software, make sure you're only downloading it from the official page and not a third party site to ensure you're getting the most up to date and uncorrupted files. Now that's downloaded, simply install the application. And open it. When Handbrake opens, it'll by default ask you to drop in your source files. Now, as a nice feature here, you can add a single file or a batch of files. So right off the bat, I'm gonna drag in an entire folder of clips from one of my project folders off my project drive. Okay, now that all the source files are scanned in, it's time to select our encoding options. And to do this, I'm gonna start with a simple preset that actually outputs encoded files almost identical to my final output renders from Resolve. And that's the under web, the Vimeo YouTube HQ 2160p 64K preset. Now I just need to adjust a few settings. So under the summary tab, you see that web optimized is selected. Now this doesn't affect the quality or size of the output file. It's just how the data is organized. So it could be played over a network, which is beneficial if you're storing this file on say a network or a cloud storage site. Align AV just ensures the file maintains audio and video sync throughout all decoders. Now, moving on to dimensions, we see our source file is in fact 
3840 by 2160 with a pixel aspect ratio of one to one. It's 4K standard, 4K UHD, and our output size is exactly the same. Now, you could adjust it here if you wanted to, for example, if you wanted to reduce the resolution to say 1080p. However, it's much more effective to do that with one of the presets. I'm not sure why, but I just find that it's faster with the preset rather than adjusting the size under the dimensions tab. Now, keeping with the speed idea, under filters, I can turn off interlace detection and de-interlace because my camera footage is progressive and not interlaced. However, if you shoot at say 1080i, uh, then you can decomb your footage here. And next is video, and I have several options here. And the first is video codec. And this is where I trade speed for space. So the two main codec choices are either H.264 or H.265. And if your system is equipped with an NVIDIA GPU like mine, you can select the NVIDIA hardware acceleration for each one. Now, I'm not gonna get into what the difference is between these codecs in this video. That's an entire video, which I'll leave to much smarter people than me. What I will tell you is, Generally, H.265 encoding will result in a much smaller file size, but will take longer than H.264, and using the NVIDIA encoding for both generally is faster, but results in a larger file size. This is also affected by your system, so let's take a look at a chart. First, this was encoding on my primary workstation consisting of a second gen 32 core 64 thread Threadripper 2990WX, an RTX 2080 Ti and 64 gigabytes of RAM. The file encoded is a 6 minute 3.96 gigabyte H.264 4K UHD video output from my Lumix G7 and was encoded with all the same settings I just took you through. You can see we got the best overall compression of 204 megabytes from the H.265 software encoding. However, the longest time of five minutes and 40 seconds, while the H.264 software encoding produced the largest file size, but much quicker at only three minutes, 31 seconds. Now we see a typical result with the H.265 NVIDIA or NVENC encoder that while considerably faster, the file size was considerably larger. Now for the outlier here, which is the H.264 NVENC encoding, which resulted in the fastest time, but also a considerably smaller file size as compared to the X.264 encoding. Again, I'm not the expert here, but I believe this is due to the significant improvements NVIDIA made to its H.264 encoder with the Turing GPUs. Now, for those of you that have an AMD GPU or even a Intel CPU, Handbrake does have options for both VCE and Quick Sync encoding. However, I'm not 100% positive as I haven't tested Handbrake VCE encoding since like the RX 590 or Quick Sync since I had an i7-4770. But as I understand, they both perform similar faster than software encoding, but with larger file sizes. All this just to tell you that the codec I go with is the X265 because although it takes over 50% longer, it reduces the file size by up to 95%. And while time is money, well, drive space is more money. Now, as far as quality settings, I just leave it at 22. If you slide it to the right, quality goes up along with file size. And if you slide it to the left, quality is reduced, but so is file size. I find that the 22 is just right for 4K UHD video. After compression, I don't see any noticeable quality loss and I have a very compact file. I also leave the video optimization settings at default settings. That brings us to the final tab to cover, which is audio settings. Here I select AAC and I reduce the default bit rate to 128. This is pretty much identical to the original file bit rate, so I have no audio quality loss at all. 
Okay, now it's time to identify our output file location. Now, this is where I would select my RAID array to basically archive my footage. However, I'm in between RAID array storage at the moment. Long story short, my old RAID 5 drives are almost five years old and I took them offline until I can upgrade to new larger drives. So in the meantime, I have a single four terabyte hard drive that I'm using as my primary backup with actually just cloud storage as my parity. Anyway, on that four terabyte drive, I've set up project folders that are identical to the folders on my project drive. And this will be the output location. The file name remains the same with the comp in brackets added. Now, once I've selected all my settings, I can drop down the add to queue and select add all. You can see that all 50 files were added to the queue. Here they are here. And now all I have to do is click start queue. See here, we're preparing to encode and we've started. Now, this is gonna take about four hours on my system, so let's just skip ahead. So that took just about four hours and 10 minutes, but honestly, Handbrake doesn't completely scale to utilize all of my CPU. It uses about 50% max, so I continue to work while the files are encoded in the background. But let's take a look at the results. Just open these folders up a little for you and the original uncompressed folder here that's on my project drive is take a look 172 gigabytes now in my backup the compressed folder is here again all 50 of the files are here and 12.1 gigabytes that's like a whopping 93 percent compression not bad and i really can't tell a quality difference between before and after and Finally, I'll basically duplicate the folder system that's on my projects folder to my backup folder. And I'll just copy it all over. Finally, I'll repeat this process for all the footage for the project and then move all other media to the appropriate folders on my storage drive. For any shared media such as stills, transition videos, or audio files, I create shortcuts to the original file location on my assets drive and just copy that shortcut over so I can easily find the footage later without cluttering up my drives with many, many copies of the same file. And the final step is to package up the entire folder as a RAR using WinRAR. WinZip or 7-Zip can also be used. And I send that package off to the cloud. Now, I use Dropbox, but I'm not here to pawn cloud storage solutions today. I will say that the affordability of unlimited cloud storage nowadays is the reason I've been hesitant to replace my local RAID storage solution. Anyway, once the backup is uploaded to cloud, I'll delete all the files off my project folder, except for the final render, which I'll leave in place as a third copy, just in case. Call me paranoid. I'll then just place the original project folder in brackets so I know it's been backed up. So finally, why? Why do all this? Why not just delete the footage after I've done the final render and be done with it? Well, first, because it's mine. I spent time creating it and don't want to just delete it. Also, if I need to go back to it, re-edit, adjust, I have everything I need to do that. I can just drag it back to the project folder. 
And finally, I may want to go back and use some of the footage for other projects. Outtakes, different angles, the stuff that was symbolically left on the cutting room floor, I still have access to. For example, I have hours of footage of building PCs, which a lot of times ends cut up into a five minute montage. I can go back and recut that footage into say a build guide with some voiceover and a little bit of new A-roll. New video, a lot less work. But that's the end of this work day and this video. I hope you learned something. That's why I do what I do. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up. And again, the best way to support a small channel like mine is by subscribing. So until next time, have a great week.